The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Right. Hey. Give me one second. Yeah, what do we got? Yeah, no problems. I have Florida here saying I need a huge magnet Monero or Monero magnet ad for the side of my van. Does anyone know where they sell those? I don't know. Put it up on XMR Bazaar, man. Maybe you'll you'll find somebody to do to make one for you. That's pretty cool, though. All right. Mm. All right. So pull. There we go. All right. So first news link we have here. What do we uh, got? Lockbit. Yeah, I saw this earlier this week. Lockbit. Uh, this is overhyped, uh, very overhyped. So they were oh, yeah. kind of overhyped. Oh, yeah, we get Federal Reserve data. We're going to leak it, and it turned out to really just be a third-party bank, Evolve Bank data. And I th- uh, I think okay. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it wasn't like, all oh, the Federal Reserve's deep dark secrets. It was nothing like that. Uh, an Arkansas-based bank. That and they were asking that- for Monero payment for... Yeah, as far as I know. Yeah, no. let me go back okay. to the tweet. Uh, I guess this didn't say specifically. Um, but yeah, I believe they were asking for Monero. I, I remember seeing uh, lots mm. of tweets about this earlier. It was overhyped earlier this week, and then everyone was disappointed. <laughs> so yeah, it happens. Well, at least they were asking for Monero. So that, that, that that's a good sign. But no, they didn't get the Federal Reserve's data. Sorry, guys. Maybe next time. Yeah. Uh, yep, tweet from Aaron Day. Monero was my most used crypto this year. It, I mean, it really is true that there Monero is like it, it's one of the, if not the one that's actually like used mostly in the real world. Yeah, I wanted to put that out there. You know, Aaron Day, he obviously he likes Monero, he uses Monero, but he's, he's not some like Monero Maxi. And here he is honestly st- stating how uh, that was his most used crypto at pork fest. So it's not just me, guys. I'm not just, I'm not bullshitting. I swear, <laughs> come, come out to pork fest, you'll see it. See it for yourselves. All right. Oh yeah, this is this is cool. Uh, so I remember saying earlier this week that uh, Assange, um, they were they were basically donated whatever the group is um, that had paid for his flight, which is very very expensive to get flown out of the UK. Uh, somebody had donated a, a crap ton of Bitcoin and. Everyone's like cheering and rallying around that. I was like, oh, yeah, great, unstoppable money. I'm just thinking that's cool. And that's that shows like a good thing. But someone's going to trace this down because I mean, it's such a large amount of Bitcoin. And well, here we go. Tweet Matt Green. Amazing to be that within a few minutes of a newsworthy event, somebody noting Bitcoin to Assange, folks could locate the transaction and send their address. And I don't mean amazing in a good way. So they, they tracked one donation in particular? You're saying there was like one I large guess, donation that was Yeah, made? I think this is one large one. Yeah. Um yeah, I think he means receiver address, not sender yeah. address. Uh yeah. but yeah, essentially they had opened up Bitcoin donations, and of course Bitcoin's not private at all, so it's just gonna be used as a, a thing to potentially surveil on people who are donating to their cause. If you're gonna donate, guys, use Monero. I mean, everybody watching this show already knows, but let's let's get the word out on that as well, right? It's it's one it's one it's of the best use cases because they would actually Monero. get more of the money. They would be able to yeah. keep more of the money because people wouldn't be, uh, or people who are donating wouldn't have to pay the fee, right? Uh, and even even if you're like swapping, so if you have a giant pool of Monero and you're swapping, doing an instant swap from Monero to BTC for that, even that's better. Uh, mm-hmm. than just using Bitcoin from like a wallet that has a lot of Bitcoin in it. Um, so it's it's cool to see that people are like donating, giving using Bitcoin, but it's just it's not the best way. Let's be honest here. It, it's literally one of the best, most powerful use cases for crypto. This ability to anonymously send your money somewhere and donate to a cause. It's like free speech. It it is free speech at its maximum purpose. And uh, Bitcoin doesn't work well for that, guys. It was supposed to. It doesn't. Monero does. All right, we got a tweet from Seth for privacy. I've long said that trying to use Monero or any privacy preserving cryptocurrencies as a tunnel for privacy between transparent cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum is pointless. Law enforcement and investigations continue to prove that point. Yeah, a lot of people like to do this where they think there's somehow 
making their Bitcoin or their their Litecoin, their Ethereum private by just doing a quick swap from Ethereum to Monero back to Ethereum or same thing with Bitcoin. But in reality, it doesn't it's not that easy. Um, and I'll read this this image right here. The FBI's analysis of St. Felix's cryptocurrency transactions found that he used the instant exchanger fixed float to swap Bitcoin and Ethereum stolen from the North Carolina man for Monero, a cryptocurrency designed to be difficult to trace, and then back to Ethereum. But because he carried out those swaps in a single web session, there it is, guys, prosecutors were able to subpoena fixed float for its records and show that the sender and recipient were almost certainly the same person, despite his attempts at obfuscation. Big Float basically connected the beginning and end points of the tunnel, says Chris uh, James, so I'm not going to pronounce his last name, head of global investigations at cryptocurrency tracing firm TRM Labs, which published analysis of the case. It doesn't matter what you do in between if you can get the inputs and outputs. So this is some people, they don't really. So wait, like, ex explain to me. What, so, so somebody used an instant exchange, essentially. Okay. Swap. Yeah, so basically somebody used Fix Float. They took mm -hmm. Ethereum swapped it to Monero, immediately swapped it back to Ethereum. And there's so many things wrong with this because you can you can kind of do this in a way that's private, but it involves not using the same exchange, not using right. the exact the amount, same. doing it at a completely different time and doing different amounts, right? If you're, sw if you're taking 0.1 BTC, swapping it to Monero, then immediately swapping that just about that exact amount minus a small fee back into BTC, then it's going to, especially if you're using the same exchange, if you're using the same IP address, it's going to be pretty obvious and easy to that find out. That it's you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that it's you. So you can, you can, but P, the reason people don't recommend this is because there's a lot you have to think about. Um, you're better off just converting, taking all of that BTC, taking all that ETH, converting it into Monero, and just leaving it there. Just leaving it. Just just make a giant pool of Monero, and when you have to, you can actually spend in BTC or spend in ETH. You can you can swap little amounts on different exchanges. Make sure you don't use the same refund address. You know. Uh, you're and then when enough and when enough people just start doing that, the your, the value of it's also going to go up. So it's like <laughs> it's a win win for everyone, guys. Like, what are you doing? Not that we want to help criminals wash their coins, but come on, I, you're a freaking idiot. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Yep. People have, have aren't learning their their lessons. And so, who is this person? I I don't even know anything about the FBI. So what what would they uh what, who was this person or people? Court documents reveal how more than a dozen men threatened, assaulted, tortured, or kidnapped 11 victims. Oh, wow. To coerce them to hand over access to cryptocurrency, likely Ooh, the bad. worst crypto focused physical extortion crime spree ever in the U.S. Interesting. S definitely type of people we don't want out there, type of people we nope. want getting caught for these types of crimes because it's literally crimes against people like us that use crypto. Um, that being said, if you're just a, a user, and you're looking to obfuscate your transactions, don't do it in the way these people did. Really bad. Glad, glad they got caught. Felix, a 24-year-old Florida man, led a group of men behind a violent crime spree designed to compel victims to hand over access to their cryptocurrency savings. Wow. Yep. Well, at least we know degenerates like that don't watch Monerotopia, right? Because they obviously wouldn't, they wouldn't have done it that way. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Oh, let me share my screen again. Da, da, da. Uh, what is it Bad people Dad. stealing stealing people's crypto. Yeah, crazy. Um, so I didn't get to read this whole thing, but uh, I guess there was a Supreme Court decision which has overruled the Chevron Doctrine which required courts oh, yeah, to yeah. defer to the legal interpretations of unelected bureaucrats. Chevron See if you could bring it up, though. I don't think you're. I don't think you're sharing your screen right now. Where? Uh, oh, is this a... sorry. There we go. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Which was uh, quoted by this this tweet. Uh, Balaji, yeah, did a good breakdown of it. I don't know if you want to read some example. Basic, so basically, the Supreme Court ruled on this, and it's 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 a win. It's a win for the people. It's it hurts. It hurts the quote unquote deep state, right? 
the regulators, uh, it makes it more difficult for them to just create new regulations and then use them against people in an unlawful way uh, without people that they're being used against have, have some kind of recourse, right? They're where they can contest the regulations that are being used against them. Um, so it's, it's, it's a win. It's a win for for liberty-minded people like us that want less regulations, that don't want the government to be able to just, you know, use these agencies to create and enforce and adjudicate the regulations. Uh, so now uh, it's basically the, the finding is by the Supreme Court that, you know, the, the regulators, these agencies can't be the creator of the regulations and then also the adjudicator. Like there, there's a means for you to, to, to fight against the regulation in, in court uh, and determine whether or not it's, it's lawful. That's my, I think, quick understanding of it. So it's 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 positive. It's positive for, for crypto. Uh, I don't know. I, I think Balaji gives an example here under cryptocurrency. I can't read it. What is he saying? Um, number three. You guessed it. Did Congress explicitly give the SEC authority to regulate crypto? No, it did not. Cryptocurrencies didn't exist when the 1933 and 1934 acts were written. However, the SEC says it has regulatory authority over crypto, even when Congress is deliberating on bills to the contrary. Implicitly, that claim of SEC authority, too, was under Chevron. Oh, wow. So, yeah. So, in other words, if a regulator can't point to the law that gives them the power, they may not have the power and you might be able to win in a court of law. So it gives us a, a means for fighting against these agencies. These, Could you know, big deep, w for crypto. Yeah, these deep state run agencies that create these regulations with no record. They're, they're not elected officials, right? They're not, they weren't elected into Congress and they're basically creating these, creating these laws effectively that people need to follow. And then with no recourse for us to basically determine whether or not the laws themselves are, are, are just and legal and constitutional. And it looks like that has changed, which almost sounds like too good to be true, but I don't know. Everybody's celebrating it, so it seems like it's it seems like it's legit, guys. So uh, a win a win for us. Good stuff. All right, that is awesome. Uh, so this is what I found. Um, I saw people talking about this this morning. IRS reveals final regulations for crypto broker rules. The internal measures did not include decentralized exchanges or self custodial wallets under its broker reporting requirements. So uh, it's both good and bad. So the good part is that. They did not, like the, the tagline mentioned, they did not include non-custodial or decentral wallets or decentralized exchanges uh, under these new rules, uh, but they are getting stricter on centralized exchanges. Uh, the IRS revealed its final draft of the new crypto broker reporting requirements on June 28th and clarified the scope of industry participants affected by the new rule changes. According to the IRS's new reporting guidelines, decentralized exchanges and self-custody wallets will not be subject to the new reporting rules. In the recent update, the IRS explained that it reviewed the widespread comments and complaints from industry respondents, ultimately deciding it needed more time con to consider the nuances of completely centralized networks, which means they'll be coming back to it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just been pushed. It's been it's been pushed back a little bit yeah. uh they, moreover they, 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 turn, they turn the heat up they see the frogs about to jump out there yeah yeah we don't, want, yeah, we don't exactly. want you jumping out of the pot we'll only make it worse on the centralized part but, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll wait we'll wait we'll get to your your non-custodial wallets later don't worry yeah, moreover yeah. stable coins and tokenized real world assets were not exempt from the government agency's new reporting requirements and will be treated the same as other digital assets all right yep uh, next up, tweet from Untraceable, Peter Thiel on Bitcoin and crypto. When people in the FBI tell me that they much rather criminals use Bitcoin than $100 bills, it suggests that maybe it's not quite working the way it's supposed to. Maybe you need a Monero. It works the way it's supposed to. Probably the, the, the part where I'm um, less less convinced of is this, this question of um, the sort of ideological founding vision of Bitcoin or these cryptocurrencies as sort of a, you know, um, cypherpunk, crypto anarchist, libertarian, anti-centralized government thing. You know, this is always, you know, the Isn't line that what got you interested that's, in the that's, first that's place? What I, that's, that's what I, that's what I, uh, that's what I thought was terrific about it. And the, and then, you know, the question is, does it really work that way? Or, you know, has that thread somehow gotten lost? And so when people in the FBI tell me 
that they'd much rather have criminals use Bitcoin than hundred dollar bills. Um, it suggests that maybe you know maybe it's not quite not quite working the way it was supposed to. Have you sold any of your Bitcoin? Uh, I I still hold some. I yeah I, I you know there there are all these ways I I I didn't buy as much as I should have um, and uh, I I I. I I'm I'm pro I, I, I I'm not I, I'm I'm not sure it's gonna go up that dramatically from here. From here, I, yeah. I, th I think we got the we, we got the ETF edition, and I don't know who else who else buys it quickly from here. Some interesting investment advice. So uh, two that, two that, tremendous that. insights. Oh, I guess you like you plan or no? Does he have more to say? Yeah, here? just half another minute. That actually yeah, surprised. Me. I don't think I've heard you. Uh, I thought you were still all in. It. it um, I still have a small position. It it probably still can go up some, but it's going to be a volatile, bumpy ride. And uh, and uh, I, I am I'm I, I was I had a dual dual reason. One was this sort of you know ideological decentralized future of computing world that I I really do believe in, really believe would be would be better. And it, it seemed like the perfect vehicle for that for for such a long time. And I'm. I am just much less convinced of that, and so I. Interesting. So maybe, maybe, so maybe, maybe Larry Fink, with the um, BlackRock ETF, surrendered to the forces, the anti-ESG forces, or maybe um, um, uh, it's it's more like Bitcoin's been co-opted by by them, and I, I, I worry it was more the latter. Boom! Yes, sir. Mm, he knows what's up. I mean, he knows what's up. That's that's tremendous insights from a you know very intelligent guy who's at the forefront of technology, Peter Thiel. Uh, you know, he's been interested in digital cash for a long, long, long time, uh, billionaire, libertarian, and he's saying two, two things really. Number one, uh, although this is what the Bitcoiners were most focused on is the fact that he's saying he doesn't think it's going to go up much more, right? Um, maybe it's, you know, it's, it's already a pretty large asset. Like how much, how many more times can it double is essentially, I think is what it exactly. is, is what he's saying there. And then number two, he's saying it doesn't work as digital cash, which is what he's most interested in about crypto in the first place, uh, which is the more revealing and insightful thing that people should take away from this. The, the Bitcoin maxi shouldn't be like, oh my God, he's saying it's not going to quadruple anymore. Uh, what he's really saying is it doesn't work as digital cash. And that's what Bitcoin was supposed to be. So tremendous that Peter Thiel is now saying this. The the only thing he could have said more here is, and you know, I'm I'm looking at Monero, right? Monero. Like, <laughs> right? Like, uh, but he doesn't. Who knows why? I mean, it's hard to believe that he doesn't yet know about Monero. I'd find that extremely hard to believe and almost like troubling. And um, anyone you know, who's I, remotely like into crypto, I'm sure has heard of Monero at this point. It's yeah, this guy is so on top. You know, I mean, this, this guy, guy is like has. PayPal, right? I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, he was, he was, he was. I think he's saying he bought in 24. He knew about Bitcoin early, right? He's part of that that Silicon Valley insider crowd. Maybe he's Zcasher, right? Because you have the Zcash crowd that was like that were uh, you have a lot of these Silicon Valley guys that like for whatever reason they were trying to push Zcash. I guess because maybe they had a part of the uh, the Dev Fund or whatever, or not the Dev Fund, the uh, Founders Fund. Who knows? Mm -hmm. But. Uh, yeah, for whatever reason, he hasn't said the M word. Maybe he's just acquiring some before he starts saying it. Who knows? But he certainly said it without saying it. Crazy. I mean, the Bitcoin maxi narrative is over time, it's started to crumble, but it's been happening more rapidly over the past year, I think. Yep. So what else we got? Oh, yeah. uh, this is very unfortunate. It's very sad. Um, hmm. Thomas Massey's wife, I guess, passed away yesterday or the day before uh seems kind of sudden super sudden right she wasn't like you know she didn't have like cancer or anything right that we know of, right it wasn't like she was on her on her last leg here it was she's out of, out of nowhere she passed away um so there's there's conspiracy theories obviously circling around right away that that's what the internet does um but thomas massey himself if there is a Congress, you know, if there's, there's a, if there's a handful of Congress people that actually are in it for the Liberty that are out there fighting for Liberty, he is absolutely one of them. He's proven. I to mean, be he's one like of them, one so. of very, very, very few people yeah, that actually should be he really. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think, we, I don't know. Has he uttered Monero yet? He was at, um, he was at the Libertarian National Convention. I didn't get to talk to him. I wanted to do that. 
Um, I would love to get his take on it. He actually, so I, I tweeted this out there as a, you know, semi condolences. He actually followed me uh, really? in response. Really? Yeah. So wow. Wow. That, that's good. At least that's we awesome. know we have his ear, his ear in that respect. And maybe once he gets through this at some point in the future, maybe we can get him to, to jump on and talk to us. He's extremely open, but from what I've seen, very open and genuine, just willing to talk about technology. He's an engineer, uh, smart guy, inventor, just an open-minded, liberty-loving dude. He's one of the like very, very, very few who hasn't taken money from IPEC. Very few, like very yes. few, like yes. handful, like... Well, this is where you know, the conspiracy theories that are floating around, right? Um, he, he recently came out in a podcast and was talking about the fact that everybody in Congress essentially is what he was saying is is in some way influenced by APAC, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And saying that every Congress person has their own APAC representative. Yeah, their own APAC person, yeah. right? And uh, I could kind of speak to this when I when I ran for Congress. Not that I'm looking to have any of my 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 loved ones approached. I'm not a congressperson, so y you could have it, guys. Um, when I ran, you know, I got I got letters. I got I got approached. I basically got forced to write an essay. They wanted to see an essay on my like take on Israel or something like that, and. I had somebody in my campaign who was very passionate about the issue. I had them write it at the time. You know, I wasn't getting involved, in it, but it was it was bizarre. And it was like, why am I being asked to do? It? And it was like, in a way where they weren't giving up, like they really like counting me down to do this. I I ignored it. Person in my campaign was particularly passionate about it, so I let them go. You know, do their thing, and I said, all right. All right, all right. Um, but it was it was odd. It was strange, and uh, he's saying that's exactly what happens once you're w w when elected as well, and they assign a person to you, um, and you know I guess they're they're in constant contact with you, trying to you know influence you one way or the other, which you know s sounds great for their for their purposes, but uh, perhaps they have a little bit too much power and influence. I mean, they effectively bribe you with money. It's you yeah, know an air quote donation, but you know that's it's with with lots of strings attached, with the amount of money they're giving. Right, it's bribing you with money, but they they take two. There's two approaches. There's the there's the here's the money, and then there's also the the just the the pressure that they put on you to respond and take a stance on things, and they ask you and they say, you know, you need to take a stance one way or the other, and depend, you know, and they're only satisfied with one particular type of stance. And if you don't take yep. that stance, yep. you're now their, their, their enemy and they, you know, try to bury you in other ways. So this is what legislators of all, you know, this is what, what you know, uh, the, the, there's a lot of different groups out there doing these types of things, but they happen to be quite powerful. And so, um, Massey recently re made this revelation, uh, revelation and, uh, you know, it's a conspiracy theory that I mean, perhaps... it's very possible that I mean, you know, some people like they try to keep their their private life. Well, just that private. So it's very possible that maybe his wife was dealing with something behind the scenes. And, you know, he's just not very public yeah. about that. Yeah, it, um, it's, you know, I'm... but it is always interesting to think about because, I mean, Thomas Massey, he's he's got a lot of political enemies. I mean, this guy, he's he's one of the only people that like really follows the Constitution and votes that way. Um, mm -hmm. so he gets a lot of enemies. He's got a lot of enemies. I think he recently put forward like a, an end, an end, an end, the fed bill, right? Like yeah, that was, and the yeah, that was authored by him, wasn't it? Yeah. So there, there's, you know, you create some enemies <laughs> when you, when you do things like that, but it, yeah, I, I don't think he's suggesting in any way that that that's what happened, but obviously no, the, the internet yeah. is the, 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 the internet is making that <laughs> suggestion. And it's it's because of this uh, the the conspiracy theory that's out there is because of this uh, what he how he exposed APAC and the, the the influence they have. But obviously, conspiracy theories nobody knows. Yeah, at the moment, it's not very it's founded. Uh, not to disregard all conspiracy theories, but at the moment, there's like no actual like like proof that it was IPAC or anything. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, yeah. we'll we'll see what happens. But yeah, condolences to him and his family. It's very sad. But I'm glad that 
he's you know he's gonna keep fighting he's gonna keep doing what he does best yeah exactly we just uh, hope and pray that he keeps uh charging ahead because he is one of the good ones one of the few that's out there for the passion of fighting for liberty so i hope he i hope this turns into more motivation for him and and doesn't uh you know, I hope it isn't. I mean, obviously, there's there's few things that can be more hard on a person than something like that. So I hope he he, <laughs> he somehow charges on. And on that topic, I'm sure everybody saw that Julian Assange was uh, released from the Belmarsh Maximum Security Prison last week, June 24th, which is huge. And he's going to be taking a plea deal with the United States. Uh, but he's so far has returned to his homeland, Australia. And uh, the tweet that I had opened before, uh, Assange did not plead guilty to some heinous crime, but to activities that journalists engage in every day and that we absolutely need them to engage in. Until Julian Assange is pardoned, press freedom remains at risk. So it is really cool to see that um, he was able to like free himself uh, from his essentially like 24-7 solitary confinement uh that he had for like six years and keep in mind remember this guy he's never been convicted of anything yet he's not been convicted of anything yet he has never had a trial he's just been held in lockup uh until these countries can decide you know when they want to well do with well now now he has essentially been convicted of uh, now yes now yeah. he he has taken a plea deal and he's he's um he pled guilty to pled basically guilty to certain charges. The 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 SB, you know, the Espionage Act that he violated the Espionage Act uh, is what he had to plead guilty to. And so it's this, like this... two parts, good and bad. It's really nice that he's able to be like free and home, but it's also sets a scary precedent. Is that the reason that he is right now is because he pled guilty to some insane, insane U.S. laws. Uh, and he's he's not even a U.S. citizen. Like, it's crazy um, how much of a political prisoner he's been over the past six years. Yeah, now now he has been convicted of being guilty. He's pled guilty. But before mm -hmm. that, him being in prison for six years in, like, yeah. a really terrible prison. Before that, he wasn't convicted of anything. He was just held up in lockup right. um, in terrible without, conditions. Without, yeah, without, without, without trial, right? Yeah, he was, he was unlawfully detained and thrown in jail for basically a decade more right how how long how long overall? it was six like, it was like six years in the belmarsh no yeah but wasn't he somewhere else before that wasn't he he was in the he was in um ecuadorian embassy in the uk yeah yeah so that was wasn't that essentially which was less of a prison well? but it was still like he was stuck there he couldn't go yeah anywhere. he was he was stuck right i mean that's you know <laughs> that's so he 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 definitely did his time for sure for something that he shouldn't be doing time for. Uh, but they they made him plead plead guilty to violating the Espionage Act. You know, it's this, yep. this, this age right. age old right. story of national security versus versus any other fundamental right we have, and all the rights get flushed down the toilet for purposes of national security. I'll go ahead and um, read this so, first paragraph. Without ever having a chance to vindicate his right to freedom of the press, being incarcerated for 14 years in asylum and prison, de dealing with his health failing and being denied the companionship of his wife and two young sons, WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange pled guilty on Wednesday to a single felony count of illegally conspiring to obtain and disclose U.S. national defense secrets. Under the deal's terms, he was sentenced to the five years already served in prison under the U.K. and allowed to immediately return to australia so yeah this th that was his that was his charge is a felony count of illegally conspiring mm -hmm. to obtain and it's closed to his national defense secrets yep. uh, which is the sp comes time from the espionage yeah it comes from the espionage act you, buy, you know which is just it's one of as those things espionage right act. yep as, Does that uh, have as defense for the first amendment right the espionage does not have, yeah, there you go, right? So all, all, all those things get thrown out the window when there's the espionage, right? It sounds, sound, what? <laughs> sounds like it's nice to have for national security. We all, you know, but yeah, not when it means that we don't have any press anymore or we have the ability to just throw people in jail when we don't like the information that they're disseminating. That's not how freedom of speech works. Dirty people like Julian Assange. 
Yeah, yeah. How so. could he possibly give us show us that our government is super corrupt? So it's definitely a step forward. Interesting of the timing too that it happened now under Biden, uh, before the election. I don't know if they were trying to, you know, get if this score brownie points. Yeah, score brownie points. Um or this was just this was a way to force, you know, they definitely forced Julian Assange into pleading pleading guilty to this. Um why why would he not take the deal right he just wants it's to get just, out this but... is in all like like realistically this is a pretty good outcome for him mm -hmm. like it's unfortunate that the precedent that's being set but it is a pretty good outcome for him like he did not get yeah but you, you could also look at it as if it didn't happen right and trump won would he have just pardoned him right and and what they've gotten away with here is they've taken away yeah. that ability that, that ability for trump to set precedent and say no actually he's not guilty of violating the espionage act and actually setting precedent that freedom of speech is a value that we that we have here in this country well he technically could um, still pardon him of his charge can it name sure it? yes yes he could he could um but it's it's you know it's a little bit of a move on the chessboard there but potentially by the deep state now it's or much whoever, likely. Whoever, yeah yeah it's not a hot issue now uh, as right. much as it was like, exactly so they so by doing that before trump got elected they've kind of taken that chess piece off the board yep. um so interesting interesting yeah and i say before trump got elected because if anybody saw the biden debate i mean right now i think it's it's clear to say <laughs> trump is is the front runner i think yeah. you can say that with confidence who knows what's going to happen next, though? I don't know. Do we have uh, that might be in one of our next news story. Do we have anything uh, Trump Biden related in our news stories? Uh, yeah, we have this last one, uh, which I think is a little silly. Um, John McAfee's cryptic tweet from July 18th, 2020 state of Russia's first time traveler has returned and Biden is medically unfit for office in September for medical reasons. Ellen D.C. to legally replace him. He goes on to agree with the comments suggesting Michelle Obama will be the replacement. This scenario is currently playing out. Keep in mind, John McAfee said this for 20 election. I, I I believe from his tweet, he's talking about September of that year. I don't think he had some like yeah, now super people have, far uh, away now, like, to like, back like four it. years ago. Like <laughs> he's a you know some actual time traveler, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Mich people, a lot of people have suggested Michelle Obama because you know it's easy to write off. That's that's how Joe Biden got elected. He was it was easy for him to write off. It, he he did it. write it right, right, but it could literally play out this way. In September, Biden is medically diagnosed as unfit for office and quits. Uh, they discover that the DNC has the legal power to choose a replacement with other national vote. Weird, huh? And then they, I mean, so yeah, the way it is all going down, it's interesting, right? Because they the primary already passed. There's there's no Democratic primary. And now, essentially, mm -hmm. the party will just be able to choose whoever they want if Biden bows out and says, hey, guys, I'm done being president, can't do it anymore. Um, and then they force Kamala to go along with him. And then at that point, the Dems can, you know, whatever, the, the 10 guys that run the party or can choose whoever they want, essentially. Um, it could even happen. It could even happen after the Democratic convention. Right. So Democratic Convention, mm -hmm. maybe Biden still gets nominated somehow. Uh, even after that, if after that a month, you know, a couple of weeks after that, Biden steps down and says, I'm not going to run. Uh, then it's basically a couple of people in the back room from the Democratic Party deciding who the candidate is. So that's 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 pretty wild. That this is what happens when you vote it for seems... an 80 year old with severe dementia. But it seems pretty damn intentional, right? They skipped the pri the Democratic primary. They this this debate didn't need to happen. Why why was the tr why was the Biden campaign so eager to go run and do this debate? They did it earlier than when these debates normally take place. Didn't seem like good strategy on their part. Because now uh, they're gonna you know it's gonna be the excuse of like oh his health's declining we need someone else now and they're gonna use this as an example. Right, exactly. Right, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying the you know the the Democratic the establishment of the party uh is doing you know basically rolled them out there on purpose for purposes of being able to now go pick another candidate they know they know that biden can't be trump they need somebody else if they're going to try to beat him uh and so this is a way way to do that honestly I didn't think you'd make it this far i mean he's 
you know, his, he's given his cocktail of whatever every single day. He's barely kept alive. Crazy. It's very sad. It's very sad. It, it is very he's, sad. You know, he's, an, he's, he's an old man. You see, you see him with his wife out there, dragging him out there. I can't imagine he wants to be there. People are saying, though, he's stubborn and wants to stay. I think they'll definitely scare him out of it if he does want to stay. You know, they'll tell him, listen, Joe, if, if, if you stay, you you're, you're now. <laughs> if, if you stay, you're going to lose. And if you lose, Trump regime is going to try to put you, you and your family in jail. So you should probably step down. I think that I think that's the conversation that's happening right now. Somebody's going to basically if he's not already just going to do it on his own accord, they're going to scare him into doing it. Um, and who, you don't think it's going to be Michelle Obama? Who do you think is going to be the uh, I mean, it, I mean, it could be. Um, I feel like they would try to push Kamala Harris first. But I don't know. But I don't think she can win, though. I don't think she I don't think she can win. I've um, also heard like Gavin Newsom. Yeah, I Gavin mean, most Newsom. of these people are just like they're they're not liked by the majority of people. Even a lot of Democrats don't like them. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm hearing this guy, uh, Josh Shapiro. He's the governor of Pennsylvania. Um, let me quickly bring, bring that up. That's, that's a name I've been hearing now. Josh Shapiro. And I said, I actually didn't know much about him. I don't know. Flew under my radar. He's the governor of Pennsylvania. So he, he might be the, the establishment's, uh, <laughs> next option for trying to, for trying to keep the power. So keep keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on that guy, Josh Shapiro. I don't know if anybody follows things closely, but I could see him being a potential candidate replacement.